this is where we move into what we call uh, LOD 400. Uh, it's the level of development 400. Uh, here we have the NAT spec, which is uh, an authority in Australia for how we uh, document uh, data, whether it be keynotes or, uh, for this example, LOD. So LOD 400 is looking at a fabrication model, which is uh, built, the geometry and the information is built for detailing, fabrication, assembly, and installation information. So why bother with LOD 400? Why not just keep on sending out PDFs? Um, the whole idea here is we're trying to improve the connection between the designers and the manufacturers and the contractors. Uh, locally, we have initiatives here like the BIM NEPOS. It's an initiative driven by the users wanting to develop localized content that can be used directly for fabrication. They do provide the LOD 300, 350 content, but there's also LOD 400 and 500 content. The models are certified by the manufacturers and it includes technical schedules for commissioning as-built LOD 500 models. So if we look at uh, some of the tools that will enable us to provide LOD 400 or LOD uh, 500 data. Advanced Steel. Uh, Advanced Steel is an application inside of the collections and we're bringing across a number of advanced steel tools into Revit. We also have the new Revit precast concrete add-in tab where you can start to detail concrete to manufacturer standards. And outside of the collections, we've got a connection with Inventor where you can bring Inventor files through to Revit as an ADSK or an RFA file format. Um, now we're talking about expanding BIM and architecture for this class, so why would an architect use steel connections? This is a, a local example of a Richard Rogers building, uh, a photograph that I took of steel connections on the exterior of the building. They wanted to use this as the architectural aesthetic. This is where the architect from, can benefit from these new tools like advanced steel connections inside a Revit. They're simple to use. You can work with all the uh, localized steel beam sizes and then use some of the out-of-box out of the box connections or even customize these connections. Uh, a basic workflow we have here. So inside of Revit, you'll see there is a steel connection tab. We can go to the connections and load them in. Uh, there's quite a few you can choose from here. You can filter them, you can also uh, review parameters. We uh, want to just go through and create a connection between this, these bracing beams, smaller bracing beams, and this um, downstand beam. And we want to go through, select them first, and then check the type of connection to join them together. So you're not going to use every connection. Uh, you need to have a, a basic understanding of which one might be suitable. So we're going to use an eye, eye bracing splice connection here. This will now take that connection and join all these items together. It will put in the plates, the beams, the welds, should you want to. And you can even go to modify it after it's been connected. This will bring up side dimensions, outside plates, corners, guts and welds, baits and plots flanges, etc, etc, etc. So um, it's got a nice, simple interface to modify these connections, incredibly powerful, and now uh, Revit is uh, incredibly robust with all this uh, level of, of detail. Um, another new one is precast concrete. Um, uh, some architects I've been talking to are very excited about precast concrete, being able to, to design to this uh, level of detail, being able to know how big the panels can be made, maybe working more closely with the contractor, with the fabricator at the early stages. So the precast concrete add-in allows us to take a wall and break it down into individual precast concrete panels, slabs, floors, etc. So inside of Revit, we have the precast tab. You need to install this, you need to do autodesk.manage to install it. We might want to work 
uh, with the fabricator at the early stages or reach out to a fabricator to understand how you want to configure this. The configuration will allow you to look at uh, the parts of a solid wall, even how you want to send uh, the shop drawings out, the slabs, solid slab, hollow core, girder slab, uh, the built-in parts, and the cam export. So this even looks at how you're going to share the information out to the fabricator for their uh, factory fabrication. Once that's set up though, all you need to do as the architect is hit split parts, and this will divide that, that wall up into the precast panels. This has all the connectors, all the hoisting bolts, etc. built into it. It's all done to an LED 400, ready for you to uh, see in your design environment and also share with the fabricator or an estimator or somebody else who may be interested in this particular workflow. Another uh, aspect is using uh, assemblies to document this. So this will uh, show up as assembled parts. And from that assembled part, you can go and generate views. So views and schedules. So it could be an AXO section, uh, left, right, top views. But also we have the schedule part list, the material takeoff, the model schedule, all of this is available for us to set up on a sheet and then send out, should we just want to send it out as a PDF or to a sheet to review. So some really uh, powerful tools that support precast concrete LOD 400 workflows. Finally, uh, I want to look at bathroom pods and Inventor. Um, being able to use uh, bathroom pods in the workflows can accelerate the design and build workflow. An example of this is Foster Partners doing the HSBC Tower in Hong Kong. They had these bathroom pods built in Japan and then shipped to Hong Kong to meet the Thai construction program. Back in the days that they were doing this, they did models, uh, tangible cardboard plastic models. This is where they had to work out how it was going to work within the structural component with all the um, supply, drainage pipes, conduits, um, mechanical. It all had to be worked out. So um, this probably took a little bit longer. Now we can actually work with our manufacturer and reuse Inventor. So uh, we have here an Inventor bathroom pod which uh, Matthew McKnight from the ANZ technical team helped out on. Uh, you can see there's a huge amount of detail. What he's gone and done here is he's added uh, pipe connectors to allow me to connect this into the Revit um, hydraulic systems once it's loaded in. So this is a true LOD 400 model with a lot of information in it. This video just shows you a bit of a spin around of uh, all the parts. You can see we've got lighting in it. We've got um, electrical conduit here. We've got every single bit of uh, stud work, and we've even got uh, the faucets, the, um, the washout basins, the toilets, and all the uh, pipes running through the walls. So everything has worked out perfectly in this bathroom pod, and I want to now take this into Revit and connect it up with the Revit systems. So here's the pod. It's been imported in as an ADSK file. And uh, you can see the fidelity of the data has come through incredibly sharp. I haven't lost anything here. I'll go to my plan view and I want to go to my ceiling plan and look at these uh, supply pipes. So Matt, Matt's added these connectors and I can simply go to that connector and draw a Revit MEP pipe and connect it into my supply pipes here on the left. And that will automatically create the fittings I need and connect me into that Inventor model. So a fantastic workflow if you're wanting to look at prefabrication, connecting the prefabrication data into your Revit environment for an example like bathroom pods.